Hello folks, well it's spring, it's towards the end of March, it's a lovely day and I thought it's about time I did a bit more about whirly gigs. Now if you've watched any of my other whirly gig videos you'll probably have seen this blacksmith whirly gig. I'm just using it to demonstrate the principles. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you uh, a similar whirly gig that's been out in all weathers. It's had a really tough time, it's been out through all the storms and it's just about giving up the ghost now and I'm, I'm going to overhaul it and I thought I might make a video and show a few pointers uh, what to look out for. It might be of help to anybody who makes whirly gigs. Right, now this is the uh, poor whirly gig that's been out in all weathers. I mean, we do get a lot of bad weather in the UK, a lot of rain and stuff, and it does take its toll on whirly gigs, especially my whirly gigs, and you can see it's rotted away. Um, and what I, what, probably the best thing to do is to take them indoors during the winter, but I can't be bothered, I just refurbish them. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you what's happened to this one, and then I'm going to show you how I'm going to refurbish it. Firstly, the poor old blacksmith, he's been a bit worse than where his legs have rotted away, and actually I found him hanging from this. He was hanging down like this and blowing about in the wind. The fan was still going round, but the poor old blacksmith hung himself. So he's all, you can see he's all rotted away here. I did put a temporary bracket on. Uh, some months ago to keep him going, but he's finally had it and given up the ghost. So he's hung himself, so he's gonna he's coming off. The actual fan is still all right. I've got the fan. I've taken the bracket off the end because what I'm going to do is use it on another one. Um, the actual horse on the end, or but the sail, is fine. I should just transfer that over. The poor old anvils. Funny, it's all gone very light. It was. I thought it was hardwood when I made it. I'm sure I made it out of a bit of beech, but it almost feels like balsa wood now. But the, the weather's got in through the top, that's the problem, but I'm going to address that in the next one. Um, I shall probably use the same pole fixing, and we'll go into that later. So what I'll do, I'll take that off, and I'll show you what I'm going to do with the replacement. Now what I've done, I've clamped it onto a piece of wood so I can stick it in the vise to show you better than having it loose on the bench. Uh, I don't put the pole on, or the fixing for the pole, um, as in this one. This, this, um, the method of fixing it to the pole. I don't do that until I've actually finished the whirly gig and got it all set up, because the it, uh, the, you really need the pole or the fixing to be in the centre where it's balanced correctly. And until you've got it all finished with the fan on the end and everything with the weight distributed, you don't know exactly where the best point of balance is. So I generally make it all up and then I do that the that piece last. I sort of plan in plan ahead for it, but I don't do it the final positioning of the the uh, fixing until the till I've made the whole thing and balanced it up. Now I'm going to start with the anvil um, but what I've done on this one is I've actually used a piece of copper on the top to stop the water getting in so I'm hoping that's going to last longer. It's simply a little block of oak just a, an odd piece I had um, in my box of junk bits of wood um, somebody else threw it away and um, I've cut that out and I've just screwed another little piece of oak on the edge. I'll just move the camera in and you might be able to see, that, see it a bit better. There we go. It's a lovely little anvil. I painted it black the top. This is a wooden block. I don't know, I might paint that brown or I might just put varnish over the top. But as you see I've made it of oak and I've just put this little copper plate around the top. I didn't, you don't have to use copper, you can use anything, a bit of tin, even a piece of old baked bean can will do the job. It just stops the water getting in through the top, through the end grain of the oak or, or whatever wood you particularly are using. So any bit of metal will do. And just nail it on. I've just put a couple of brass nails in. Now this is the drive mechanism. I've taken this off the old whirly gig so I didn't have to make it again. Um, it's simply a piece of old Meccano uh, bracket, double bracket. You don't have to use Meccano. You can use any metal. Just bend it to shape and drill some holes in it. But I think that's covered in my other videos, but that's that's one I took off the other one. Uh, it's simply a case that the fan fits on the end like so, tighten the screw up, and then that just gives you the cam action, which can operates the blacksmith's hands or arms, I should say. So that's I've just transferred that over from the other one. That's probably the most important part. So you put that on. Basically, you put that piece on first to decide where you're going to have it, and then you can work out where the rest of it's going to go. Right. I've got the bloke on the 
whirly gig. He's screwed on. I've screwed him on temporary. There's another screw goes underneath, but I've not put that in. You don't need it at the moment. He's not finished properly. I'll have to have a bit of paint on him. Um, you know, his eyes and stuff like that. But I just want to set him up. That's his, his um, left hand arm. Uh, that piece of rod I've just stuck in for now to get the angles right. That's where he'll hold a horseshoe. Uh, and I've got a temporary little rod there. And I'm just going to poke that through the other side. If I can get it through. I'll just hang loose at the moment. Uh, and then I've got, this is the... You know, that's the other arm. And then you've got his hammer. A little hammer. Actually, it's quite a big hammer. I think the bigger the better because it looks more effective. And I made a hole through his hand to put the hammer in. At this stage, don't cut, you know, make a longish handle. You can cut that off later to size if you want. And you can move it in and out and adjust it. Like That's the thing. I pop that on there. Again, this is only temporary to, for trial and error. Now, you'll see the hammer. You want the hammer about in the right position on there. You don't want it too far out and you, in as near as you can get to the middle, I suppose. That would do. Now, that's the motion, effectively, like that. Now, you've got to decide whether you want the hammer to clout the anvil. Don't worry about the fact that it's wobbling about. That's because I haven't got any washers or no fixing on here. When that's fitted, that'll be a bit more straight and... You know, I mean, obviously it's going to wobble about a bit, and that doesn't matter. But it'll be okay when it's all finished, when it's fitted on properly, with the little um, cam on the end. Okay, so what you've got to decide is, do you want that to hit the anvil and give a clack, clack, clack in the wind, or, or not? If you don't want it to, you've got to adjust the linkage so that this doesn't actually reach the anvil. Personally, I like it. I mean, when it's windy and this thing's going tap, 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 at a, a right old rate or not, so I quite like to hear it actually, so I always have mine so it clouts the anvil, but you don't have to have that. Now, one of the reasons I'm doing this video, I started to refurbish it and I thought it's probably a lot of people get confused with the linkage and how to get it right, and it can be a bit tricky. Now, this is my previous linkage, and the linkages I usually make are bicycle spokes. They don't have to be new ones, old ones will do, or you don't have to use bicycle spokes, any sort of wire, but bicycle spokes are fairly strong. And um, that's why I've decided it's a good thing to use. Now this one is what was on the other whirly gig, but because I've changed the size of him, I've made him a bit taller and everything, it won't work, and I'll just show you why. If I put that on there now, if I turn it, you see his it's, 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 um, hammer is right up over his head, and it doesn't actually go down far enough to hit the, hit the anvil. So <laughs> he's threatening somebody, but he's not actually doing any work. Excuse me. So what you've got to do is make this longer. Now it can be confusing as to what length to make it. So what I do is this: don't use your you met the part that you're like the bicycle spoke or whatever that you're going to use initially, because um, you just keep making them and they're a bit fiddly to bend. Use some cheap rubbishy wire to start with. This is a bit of old wire. Uh, when the chaps come to put a new gas tank in uh, a couple of years ago, they had a big roll of this, and they are going to chuck it in the skit, and they knew I was a scrimper, and they said, do you want this coil of wire? So I had it, and there's, there's about 500 yards of it, I think, and it's very soft and bendable, but it does ideal for this. So if you pop it on there, you can put, put a little fixing on there, a little collar just to hold it in place. You don't have to. Just temp This is all temporary, don't forget. And then you can loop it through there, and then you can just adjust it. I'll just bend there. And then, if I put this, turn this, now you can see, that's a lot better, because his hand, his hammer doesn't go up too high, and it clouts the platform. You don't want it to clout too much, it'll move, because I haven't got a collar on the end of there. But to me, that's about right. So having established that that's about the right length, you can then take, set this roughly how you want it. It's always good to put a little bend in it, by the way. I always have a little bend about halfway, so, so that this doesn't interfere with his bottom. Um, so once you've got the actual length on this soft piece of wire, you can take that off and then you can make your proper one out of a decent bit of quality wire uh, just by copying that. And it's much easier than trying to make one of these in the first place because once you've bent this, it's a job to... It's quite hard, this stuff, bicycle spoke stuff. It's damn good for linkages, but it's very hard for bending. And if you use this cheap stuff to get the right length, it makes it a lot easier. Don't leave that on, because it won't last. It'll, I've tried it, it'll just snap eventually. So, um, but I mean, any wire will do, but that stuff isn't very strong, it's very, very soft, that is. But I think that's about right, so that's the one thing. Then you've got to decide, as I said about the hammer, what position you want it in, and whether you want it to tap or not. 
Um, I think that, personally, I think that's about right. I like the idea that he clouts it. Uh, on the other side, um, as I say, that's just temporary. <coughs> I usually have a little horseshoe or something, um, which you, which can be just static. Most people would just leave it so that it just... I made a new one, by the way, here, but I haven't actually painted the ring yet. And most people just let it rest on there so that he just clouts it and he's holding it. What I do... As you'll see on my other one, which you saw at the initial part of the video, I fit it to that hand and then I loop a piece of wire around his other hand so that it just flicks that up. So every so often, I can show you that in the other video in a moment, that just lifts up and down as though he's moving it as he clouts it. But I say you don't have to put that in, it's just an extra feature that I've added. So that's about it for the man. You've got to get the distances right and I always allow enough there in case the fixing needs to go in that middle point, you know, where you fix it on the pole. Because um, knowing my luck, it's sure to be right under the anvil, which makes it awkward, because it's better to have it in a, in a gap there. Um, certainly the way I do it. And as I say, I can't work that out until I've got everything finished with the tail on, or the sail on, and the actual fan on here. Once it's all roughly assembled, and I can then balance it and get the best point for, the, for fixing it on the pole. But I can't do that. Um, until I've got all the bits on. Now you can just check it with the fan on there, look. So I think that's about right. And having done that, I can then make the proper linkage out of some decent bicycle spoke material or other wire. Uh, and again, like I say, this is all temporary. It's quite good fun, actually. It's quite addictive. You start making whirly gigs, I reckon it's pretty good for relaxation purposes because you can have quite a bit of fun with them because as you go along, you can think of various little things you can add to it and and it, you know, put your own character into it, paint them how you like and everything, and make the bodies whatever shape you want them. And, and the odder they are, the better they look, actually. You don't want to make a perfect person. If you can make them a bit quirky, they're going to look a lot more interesting. And the same as the colours. The brighter colours you can paint them, the better it is, the more they show up. And uh, if they're dull, you know, they're a bit boring, I think. Anyway, that's, that's, I, I hope that's of interest to somebody. It's just a few things, a few pointers to look out for. I'll come back when I've done a bit more to it.